Welcome back to my workshop. Now today I've been asked to make a couple of small wooden frames for some very small stained glass windows. Now it's these. Okay let's have a closer look and see what we can do. Okay so what we have here is a couple of very small stained glass windows. Uh, this one was made by Pete and this one was made by Mrs Pete. This one's the best one. Anyway uh, what I've got to do is build a wooden frame around these but it's got to be so the glass is actually inside the frame. Hmm. But before we do that, let's quickly turn the light on and see what they look like. Yeah, very nice. There's a couple of little tags at the top here where they could be held up by a chain. Got to leave those on just in case. But let's see what we can make out of this bit of wood here. That's all I've got. That piece of wood, which is an old leg off of a sideboard. Uh, the problem is, it's made up of bits and pieces of old wood. So I've got to chop into that and find out how good it actually is. Okay, so we stumbled at the first hurdle. Uh, I've just cut a very small veneer off of the side of that piece of wood. And it looks like it's made out of sections of wood. Now looking at the actual piece, there's a big chunk in the middle here of foreign wood which limits our options a little bit i'm going to see if this is all solid and this bit's all solid i don't know if it'll be enough but we can only hope so let's do some more chopping <sighs> right so i just chopped this down a bit further uh, now when you buy your solid wood furniture this is actually what you get it's made out of blocks of old rubbish um, yeah, so there's not as much useful wood in there as I suspected. Um, and the good bits are still made out of blocks as well. Alright, let's see if I can use that. Okay, so I couldn't quite get enough uh, wood for both frames uh, to be exactly the same uh, out of one leg. So I've managed to get hold of another leg. I've cut that open. That's even worse. Uh, I think I'm going to have to rethink my plan. Okay, so what I've done here quickly is I've made a, a panel the same size as the panels of glass so I can work with this rather than risk breaking the glass. Right, so I think I'll leave you there for a moment. Um, I've got enough now for both of the panels. Uh, both of the panels have been through the planar thicknesser. So now I've got some nice square pieces of wood. I've got my panel for trying. Uh, so the next thing is to start cutting some angles. But it's Halloween, so I'm going to go and dress up as a zombie chef and take part in a Zoom competition. Right, I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> okay, so that's Halloween, all done and dusted. Uh, I've got all the makeup off now, so that's good. All right, the next stage is, uh, before I do the mitre joints, you know, as the corners, uh, what I want to do is a recess all around the edge for the glass to actually fit into. Okay, uh, now obviously I need to know how deep that's got to be. So looking at this, I probably want to do it about 8mm deep and that way you'll still be able to see the edge of the solder. Uh, but it'll be secure enough in the, in the frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my table saw to do these recesses. Okay, so I want to put a recess down the middle of this using my table saw. Uh, now what I've done is measured the width of this, which is about 14mm. I've set my the middle of my blade about seven millimeters away from the fence. So when I run this through the table saw, I'll end up with a single groove down the middle. Then what I'll do is I'll move the fence probably about one millimeter out. Then I'll run it through again and then turn the piece of wood around and then run it through again. 
Now what that will do is it will eventually make the channel in the middle wider and wider and wider, but equal either side. Uh, so what I have to do is do all of the pieces of wood all at the same time, and I'll gradually increase the depth until I get my 8mm deep. That's how I'm going to do it. Let's see if it works. Okay, so that went relatively well. I've now got a channel in all of my pieces of wood. Uh, just a word of warning, if you're using a table saw, be very careful because they are dangerous pieces of machinery. Okay, so I've now got my channels. Uh, this is my fake piece of glass. Uh, I'll use this now because I don't want to damage the real piece. Now the idea is obviously these fit around the edges here. Let me join it. Um, just the main ones. So these should all fit like this. Okay, then across the top. Okay, so the glass is going to fit in there like that. Uh, but what I've got to do now is do the mitre corners. Uh, so first thing I've got to do is set up my mitre saw uh, to make sure it cuts exactly 45 degrees. Because if it doesn't, then all of the joints here will be rubbish. Here we go. Okay, to quickly check my mitre saw, uh, what I did is I set it at 45 degrees. Let me show you here. This at 45 degrees. Okay. I did a first cut, then flip this over, and this should give me my 45 degrees. Check it with my square, and it's lovely. Uh, the only problem is I did a little bit of tip here, okay, and that is because the blade is slightly on the wonky. Okay, so I've adjusted that, then did a second cut, flip over my parts, put them together, check my 90 and also check to see if there's any movement like this all right so now i'm fairly confident i can do my cuts and everything is going to be groovy right let's cut the real thing okay so i'm at the point now where i'm about to frame up the uh, very first frame yeah nice and square and i've checked the glass in it and it actually fits which is all great then i went to go and cut my second frame and they're too short. Now obviously I was limited on the uh, wood I had. Uh, I cut them to the maximum length I could get. Uh, let me show you how too short they are. Okay so this is my um, first frame which is the right length. These are my second pieces. Now if I put those to the maximum length they should be. Look here this difference is about two and a half mil difference but because of that I've got to start again. Uh, Problem is I've got to do both frames again because they've obviously got a match. So what I've got is another piece of wood and I'm going to start again. How exciting. Now obviously you don't want to see that so what I'll do is I'll do that and then we'll get back to where we were. Okay so now I've caught up with myself. I've now cut some new pieces of wood. Uh, this is for the red window. This is for the blue window. Uh, what have we got to do now is... On the glass, we've got these two little loops here, which we want to keep those in place, but we want to hide them underneath the wood. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I put the wood where it's got to go. I've made a couple of little marks here and here, and then I'm going to drill out in here to allow the metal to go in. And what I'm going to use for that is this. Okay, so I'm basically going to drill in here just to make enough room for the wire.
Okay, so now the uh, recesses are made for the uh, the glass, the little pegs on the glass. Uh, what's next is I'm here at the router table uh, because they want this sort of profile. Okay, so two grooves on each side. So two grooves. Uh, and what I'm going to do is do it on the router table here. So I run it through that way, then turn it around, run it through that way, gives me two grooves. <laughs> Okay, so a little bit of sanding is needed. Uh, we've got two grooves. Okay, and we do that to the rest of the bits. Okay, so that's that done. Uh, I've got the grooves in them here, like this, and the other one is over here. Uh, what I'm going to do now is have a quick tidy up because look, the workshop is trashed. Uh, I better tidy that up before I go any further. Right, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so for the last couple of days, uh, the frames have been sitting here gathering dust while I've been at work. Uh, what I've got to do now is they're not stuck together yet, um, but what I need to do is on the corners, let me show you here. So on the corners, this is going to be a glue joint, but also what I want to do is strengthen it. And what I want to do is cut across the corner and insert a hardwood piece of wood so it bridges the corner. Okay, so what I'm going to do is make a jig for cutting those because I don't want to cut it once the glass is in place because I might break it. Uh, okay, so what I'm in the process of doing is making a jig. Let me show you what I've got so far. Okay, so what I've got so far is this, uh, which is just literally three pieces of MDF stuck together with some wood glue and some bread nails. And now the idea is this sits on my fence and it slides backwards and forwards. Now the idea is I have a 45 degree angle here, a 45 degree here is my frame, is it here? Like this? and then I can go across the blade to cut into the corner of the frame. And then we might see it in action, if it works. Okay, so after ages of fettling, uh, the jig is now ready to go. Uh, it's literally a case of fitting the piece of wood in it and then running it through the table saw. Uh, now it took me ages and the idea is I'm going to eventually end up with a cut like this which I can then put a hardwood infill in. Uh, now a couple of issues I had, it was cutting at an angle. Okay, this side slopes down that way and this side slopes down that way. Now obviously if I'm going to put in a wooden insert in there, uh, there's going to end up with little gaps. So this is no good. And the reason it's doing that was because the blade Okay, the teeth are actually at angles. Each subsequent tooth is at a slightly different angle to the previous one. Okay, and this ends up giving you a slope like this, which is no good. So I've had to change the blade to one with straight cut teeth. Right, without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay, so that's all my corner grooves done uh, and I've cut all of my little squares. Uh, these are about 4.8 mil thick. Uh, I've cut obviously eight of those uh, and these basically slot into these corners here. So after I've glued it up, I can insert these. Now I had to do these first because I don't want to be trying to bang them in with a hammer because I might break these, which is not good. Okay, so now I'm ready for the glue up. Uh, one thing to remember, if you're doing if you're doing that type of joint, uh, always take note of the, the grain direction. What you want is the grain going diagonally across the corner uh, because that's, that's the strongest way. If you do it the other way, you could end up with, you make your biscuits like this and they can snap. All right, so always take note of the grain direction. 
Right, let's get some glue going. Okay, so I've got both of the frames sticking together now. Uh, they've got clamps on them, but the clamps are not really pushing tight because obviously it's glass, it might break. Uh, you'll notice I've got paper everywhere. <clears throat> now the idea is, obviously there's gonna be some glue squeeze out. I want that to stick to the paper rather than sticking to my bench or a piece of wood. Uh, it's easier to sand off paper than it is to sand off wood. Right, so I shall leave these now to dry properly and then I shall insert the corners. Okay, so the frames have been sticking overnight. Um, they're now all dry. Uh, I've taken the clamps off and I've inserted my corners like this. Uh, what I have to do now is this is dry. Uh, I have to cut the corners off, the excess wood off, and then sand it all back. So uh, I think I'll cut those off on the bandsaw. So let's get over to the bandsaw and do that. Okay, so now these have been sanded to death. Uh, they're nice and smooth. All of the little bits of glue out have been uh, cleaned off. Uh, they've been masked up and they're ready for the first coat of treatment. What you didn't see was a couple of minutes ago, I was uh, blowing off some of the sawdust and I nearly dropped one. That would have been really bad. Right, I'm gonna clear the bench off so it's dust free and then I'm gonna give it its first coat. <laughs> Okay, so I'm now ready to give it a coat of something. Right, I'm gonna use this stuff, which is Osmo Door Oil. Now this is a, uh, a wax oil. I've used it quite a few times. Uh, it's quite expensive, uh, but it's very hard wearing. Uh, so this should be good. Uh, now I'm gonna do probably two or three coats, but it takes 24 hours drying time. So this is gonna take another three days. So I'm gonna give it a quick coat with the brush, leave it until tomorrow, then denib it, and then give it another coat. Okay, let's start painting. Right, that's the first coat. Let's leave it to dry. Right, that's that. It's been drying for 24 hours now, so it's the first coat done. Uh, just going to denib it with a little bit of wire wool uh, and then give it a second coat. Right, let's get on with that. Okay, so that's it, it's all done. It's uh, two or three coats of this stuff. Uh, what we do is we'll leave it for a few days and then give it a final buff off once it's hardened. Um, and here they are. Let's have a closer look. Here they are, let's have a closer look. 
So it's a nice bit of glasswork actually. Uh, might be a bit dusty at the moment because uh, obviously they're in the workshop. Uh, all my mitre corners here with the wooden inserts or hardwood inserts. So these can be hung either way, this way or this way. Uh, what I'll do is I'll let Pete hang some hooks on there and the blue one, which is obviously the best one. Um, this again, it's very nice, quite nice joints. And again, the corner inserts. Okay, so I think they've come out okay. Uh, as I say, they're still a little bit soft at the moment. Uh, they need to be hardened off uh, over a few days and then given a quick buff. Right, I shall take these into work tomorrow and give them to Pete and uh, hopefully he'll like them. So, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Uh, stained glass windows from one of my front lines. Both the panels. Oh god, this is shit. How oh, wonky is that? Uh. Put, 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 put. Mm.